Apparently broke that in the Midland game. Played with it broken a week ago and just discovered it in time to get a cast on it and missed most of the practice week. Dan Crotz will bang up a little bit, but we'll see a lot of action at the defensive tackle spot. He's, uh, of course, been bothered by a earlier shoulder separation, still trying to heal that completely. Dan Oswald back for the nose guard position tonight. and He pinched a nerve in that shoulder last week against the Dana Vikings, so he's playing a little banged up tonight. But that's kind of the way this football team's been going here in 1987. Kurt Westhoff and Robert Johnson going to have to carry the big load of linebacker. In the secondary, you've got Joey Holmberg at cornerback, Scott Seeloff starting at the other corner, and Frenchie Holmberg and Marcus Hancher starting in the safety spots. Offensively for Westmore tonight, the offensive line will consist of uh, Jeff Waldheisen at one of the tackle spots, Wayne Spearing at the other side. As I mentioned, it'll be uh, Byron Bowling going at Tim Polly's guard spot, and uh, John Barton, who wasn't expected to start tonight, he's been bothered by a bad back, but he'll be in the lineup at that right guard spot, and uh, old reliable Craig Larson from Kingsley will be in there at center. Kelly McClinic at quarterback today. Charles Hill and uh, Dwayne Ho uh, Hobart will be in there at uh, the starting running back spots. The flanker, the wideout spots, will be manned by Blaine Bell and by Todd Skolton. And uh, the tight end will be uh, Tim Shipley tonight. So there's Westmar's starting lineup. Don and Westmar, two ball clubs that have a lot of characteristics that are the same. They run out of a veer attack. They don't like to put the ball up more than 15 times a game tops. Going to see the ball on the ground a lot tonight. Two good, hard-hitting, aggressive defensive football teams. I think we've got a good ball game for you tonight. And, of course, it's a homecoming of sort for Coach Randy Schmazel in his second year here at Westmar as the head coach. He, of course, grew up just 15 miles down the road, went to high school here in Crete, growing up in Hallam. So I'm sure he's glad to be back home. A lot of his old friends from Hallam are here tonight. So it's going to be a fun evening of football. Hope you sit back and enjoy it. Well, we might also add that just a beautiful night for football here tonight. A nice uh, sunset here in Nebraska. We were, of course, just up the road a piece. A couple of weeks ago in Fremont, had a very similar type night. I think even more pleasant tonight than maybe that night was here in Crete. We're about, uh, oh, as the crow flies, about 25 miles south-southwest of Lincoln. So we're definitely in football country, and they're all excited down here over the Huskers' big win earlier on Saturday against uh, Arizona State down in Sun Devil country. Eagles will be receiving the opening kickoff, and uh, as they introduce the starting lineups, we noticed there were a couple of changes. Apparently, Rob White will be starting instead of Blaine Bell. He has the flu. Talked to him a little bit before the game, and he said, my, ha my head is uh, uh, bonging, and uh, I've got the upset stomach, but apparently he's going to give it a try here. Tim Polly will not be starting. Byron Bowling will get that start, and we noticed that Kelvin Pierce is going to get the start over Dwayne Hobart, but I'm sure Hobart will play quite a bit. Westmar plans to use quite a bit of a wishbone look tonight. Doan comes in at one and two. They won their opening ball game of the year, beating Tarkio 23 to 10. Lost to Northwestern 30 to 26, taking a 26 to 12 lead in the fourth quarter of that one, and lost up in Orange City. And they beat, uh, lost to Colorado Mines last week, 35 to 21. It's their first home game of the year. They only have four on their schedule, and two are in November. So this is a big game for Doan. They don't get to play on the home turf too much this year. And a home opener tonight, a nice crowd gathered. Again, quite a few uh, folks down from the Mars to follow Westmar. Got some banners up down there to the end zone uh, to our left that uh, talk about the Westmar road crew. So we've got the uh, good following here. Several students I saw before the ball game have come down, and, of course, a few moms and dads. Of course, a lot of Nebraska kids on a Westmar roster, so I'm sure the parents are going to take advantage of the close proximity of the, a road ball game for Westmar and take advantage to uh, see the youngsters play. Well, Jim McPartland has it teed up. I guess Westmar is going to be on defense first, as it turns out. They introduced the offense first, so we thought maybe Westmar beginning to kick off, but apparently they'll be on the defensive first of all. And McPartland going to kick it off, end over end. Going to be taken by one of the short men at the 24, across the 30, still on his feet, down at about the 35-yard line. Kickoff returned by number 84, Don Rockenhoff from Columbus, Nebraska, a junior. A lot of Nebraska kids, virtually an entire Nebraska group here on the Doan roster. Brand Schwenk in his fourth year coaching the Doan Ball Club. Troy Kantner back at quarterback this year. He's a senior out of Lincoln. Doug Estrada is the name you hear a lot tonight. He runs that uh, important halfback spot. He's a junior out of North Platte. He's uh, ranked in the nation. Averaged about 140 yards per carry. It's about sixth, I believe, in the nation this week. Tony Sullivan, his other running mate of the backfield. They've got uh, three split receivers. No tight end. Cantner back to pass. Big pursuit. McLeod is going to put the pressure on. They throw it. 
downfield to Dexter Hoskins, who makes the catch at about the 45-yard line. Going to be a gain of about 10 on the play. Seeloff up to make the hit from the cornerback spot for Westmar. Dexter Hoskins is a senior out of Omaha. He's playing the split end. The flankers, Rod McWilliams, junior out of Newman Grove, Nebraska. And uh, the tight end is Chris Bubach. The offensive line, Mark Woolard, Scott Snyder, Dan Kukum, uh, uh, Kukumelka, Brian uh, Schwainbeck, and Jeff Johnson. Now they came up just a little bit short as they stretched the chain on that, so they're inches short, second down. Tigers open up with a passing game. You're not going to see them in the air a lot. They just uh, try to loosen that Westmar defense up a little bit, but they're still packed in there expecting the running game to be a big part of their offensive display. Again, no tight end, split receivers to both sides, three of them out of the pattern. There's Estrada, breaks a couple of tackles, and finally carries into Westmar territory to the 48-yard line. And uh, no check at Tony Sullivan, the sophomore out of Norris, Nebraska, carries for the first down as he'll... Uh, pick up yardage into Westmar Real Estate as they're uh, now at the 48-yard uh, line. First and 10 there, just underway here this evening. 14-18 to go in the first quarter. First and 10 for the Tigers at the 40. This will be the last night game of the year until the last one of the season, the Thursday night game at the Dakota Dome. It's the second of three night games on the Westmar schedule this year. Sullivan going to carry up the middle. So far, Estrada has not, the not touched the ball. Sullivan carries to about the 45. He'll get to about three on the play. Westoff. Westoff, who leads this team in tackling, up there to make the hit. Charles Hill starts the night, the national rushing leader, averaging, uh, well, he's got 500 yards in the three ball games. If you can uh, do that figuring in your head. <laughs> it's Westmar brings a 2 and one record into tonight's ball game, trying to rebound for the first loss of the year. As Coach Randy Schmazel said, it's a tough order to try and rebound on the road, and this is the longest road trip of the year. Cantner back, smothered, and he won't get it away. Good pursuit there from Mike Rogers and a strong side defensive end. Westmar getting good in play here early in the ball game, and they'll sack him back to about the 49-yard line, almost uh, back to the original line of scrimmage, and it's going to bring up a third down at about 10 to go for Doan. In fact, a little more than 10 as the down stick is uh, back behind the original first down yard marker. Third down, it will say 11 to go. Going on their own, or on the Westmar 49 yard line. Just a beautiful evening, little bit of a crosswind, but it really won't affect play that much. Cantner back to pass, rolling right, throws left handed, gonna swing it out here to the flat and it's incomplete. Intended for Brackenhoff, who returned that opening kickoff. And that'll bring up a Fourth down punting situation. Tim Eakers, probably their standout target when they throw the football, but he's going to miss tonight. So there's a break for Westmark. Good kick returner. In fact, uh, Eaker, I believe, is ranked nationally in kick returning, so he won't be in uniform tonight. Dennis and slowed with an injury. Dennis Hall, a junior out of McCook, Nebraska, going to be back to punt. Safford and Joey Holmberg back to receive the punt. It's a low snap. Takes it off the ground. Rogers almost got in there for the block. Going to kick it off to the right, and it will be non-returnable. And Doan is going to down it at about the 23-yard line in Westmar territory. So that's a punt of about 26 yards. Westmar will bring on their offense for the first time tonight. Again, Kelly McClinic starts at quarterback. Senior out of Schuyler. Schuyler just up the road a piece. Charles Hill and Kelvin Pierce starting in the backfield. Hill a senior out of Patterson. Pierce a sophomore out of Tampa. Pierce did not start the game a week ago. First and ten for the Eagles. And I'm trying to think if he started at Midland or not. He started, of course, the Buena Vista ball game and had his best game as an Eagle. Well, we see Blaine Bell does indeed get the start at offense now. They introduced uh, Rob White as the starter. Coach Smazel said that he didn't think Rob probably would start, although he'll be playing some. But we see Blaine Bell making his way into the huddle. <laughs> First and ten for the Eagles. The so the they've really been undecided about who they're going to start in those wideout spots here as we get down to the very opening test this evening. Kelly McClinic at that backfield uh, split, running the pro veer set. There's Charles Hill right up the middle. Good, hard hitting. You can hear the pops inside from way up here. Coming in from outside is going to be uh, Mark Montgomery for the nose guard spot. Uh, Jay Samuelson and Kerry Anderson on the defensive ends. Troy Thomas and Jerry Gamble from the defensive tackles. Mark Montgomery, a nose guard. Pat McHenry and Jim Bartling at the linebacker spots. Scott Nelson, Gerald Moreland, Sean Sterling, and Rich second Bartlett starting the in the Eagles secondary. Sean Sterling making his first start for Doan tonight, a freshman out of LeMoyne, Nebraska. 
play some six-man football. Eagles may test him early. There's Pierce, misdirection. Pierce going to be tripped up for the line of scrimmage by Troy Thomas from the defensive tackle spot. And he managed to lunge forward for just a couple. Out to about the 28-yard line. Going to bring up a third down. Still going to need about six for the first down. 11.36 to go here in the first quarter. No scores. Westmar's initial drive. Blaine Bell going to split wide left. Rob White going to split wide to the right. Pearson Hill in the backfield behind McClinic. Quick pass over the middle. A ship blade and led him too much. McClinic took a pretty good pop. Sent him rolling back upfield. That was open there. Kelly just led him a little too early. And it brings up a fourth down punting situation. That had the first down because, boy, that was open. Felt that's an area that the they could exploit in this Doan defense because the linebackers play so close. Shipley, they felt with this speed, could maybe get off the line of scrimmage and maybe slip into that secondary behind the linebackers for that quick uh, slant and pass. We'll probably see him go to that again later. Rob White in there to punt. Rob averaging about 32, 33 yards a punt. It's a short punt taken to the 40. Back across the 45 to near midfield. Punt return going to be made for Doan by Rich Bartlett out of uh, Arveda, Colorado. And we got an injury on the field. One of the Westmar kids down hurt on the specialty teams. In fact, there's one of the first kids down there, so we'll see who they attend to. Mike Marley was the injured player for Westmar, freshman out of St. Petersburg, one of the top hitters on that specialty team, but he got up and trotted off, so hopefully he'll be able to return when special team duty calls again. Kantner going to give again. Up the middle, there's Estrada, 45-40. 35, Joey Holmberg with a touchdown saving tackle at about the 35 yard line. There's a picture textbook uh, open field tackle by Joey Holmberg. He just uh, kept his eyes at a belt buckle and drove the helmet into his midsection and dropped him. There's the talent of Doug Estrada right there. It's his first carry of the night. And that was good for about 17 yards, first and 10 to the 35, down into Westmar Real Estate. Second trip across the 50 now for the Tigers. And we're in the black and orange. Tip pitch out. This is to Sullivan. Sullivan to the 35. They're fumbling the football. And they're still scrambling for it. I think Westmar's got it. I think Marcus Hancher is going to come out of the limit. Still wrestling for it, as you can see. But Marcus Hancher is going to win the battle. And Westmar got a big turnover. Strata had some good running room. Had got close to first down when somebody stripped the football. Good hit with a helmet right into the football area and it jarred it loose and trickled up field. Hancher got on it. Westmar got the turnover. 10.36 to go in the opening quarter. No score. So far this one's been played pretty much in the middle of the field. Definitely the field position advantage has been to Doan. As you give Charles Hill quick hitter. Hill out over the 30. Looks for the 35 and he'll be denied that. Stacked up by several black shirts. It's going to be some crisp hitting. Doan has always been a good, hard-hitting football team. And I think as Westmar each year goes through the schedule since Doan's been on it, they say Doan's one of the hardest-hitting teams they play. Going to pick up about nine in the play. Doan had some unusual splits that time, and Westmar was able to pop through that first seam, get a linebacker out of there, and get Charles some running room. Ball out to the 35-yard line. Second and about a yard. Option play. McClinic on the keeper. Got a first down. 40, 50. On his feet. Still on the move. Down to the 30. Down to the 25. And a big run for Kelly McClinic, a 40-yarder. No flags down. This one will stand. And Westmar has, for the first time, crossed the 50. Well, as an option play, nobody ever laid a hand to Kelly as he got down the sidelines. And he showed a little bit of his... Uh, Deceiving speed as he got outside in the into the secondary and was able to outlake some of the people. Simply the angles is all that caught him and saved the touchdown. That would have been a 65-yarder had he rambled from that distance. Check that, the 25. Kelly actually was uh, behind everybody, but again, the angles gave him the pursuit angle to run him down. 9.30 left to play in the first quarter, and Westmore on the move. They're in the traveling white tonight. Be back home for homecoming next week. Concordia in town. Skolton in motion. There's the keeper by McClinic. I think a broken play. Somebody went the wrong way. McClinic is going to go down for a big loss all the way back to the 38-yard line. Kelly kind of got thrown down rather rudely. And he's kind of slow getting up. 
Well, they really slammed him to the turf. They're going to mark it all the way back to the 37-yard line. Loss of 12 in the play. I think Calvin Pierce went the wrong way as they had the option play on. Calvin went to the left. Everybody else went to the right. Calvin was the option man. Kelly was left with nobody to option. 8.49 left to play in the first quarter. Unless Kelly went the wrong way. If that was a case, he paid big for that. <laughs> Second down. And yeah, there's Rob White into the ball game. Kingsley native, and he's out split wide to the left. Skolton here to the near side, the right side. There's Hill up the middle of that quick opener, and Hill is going to get back inside the 35, about the 31. Might have to start thinking field goal here shortly. Third down, they still need about 16, 15, 16 yards for the first down. Rob White going to come walking off of there. Best flu bug that swept through the ball club this week. I know Charles Hill missed tonight a practice with the uh, intestinal flu. Seems to be kind of a 24-hour type bug. But Tim Polly and uh, Rob White both down with it here tonight. Blaine Bell going to split wide to the right, and Todd Skolton running a slot here to the right. Split backs, Pierce and Hill. Straight drop back, McClinic looking, looking. Good rush over the middle. There's Pierce, wide open, 30, 25. Still on it up for the first down, and he'll get caught for the pursuit on the backside, short of the 20 at about the 23-yard line. Going to be fourth down at about seven, and on comes uh, Mike Morey, sophomore out of St. Petersburg, to try the field goal. Mike has hit three of four. 7.27 to go here in the first quarter, and Westmar going to try to put the first points on. <laughs> As Marley going to try, looks like about a 39-yard field goal try. Joey Holmberg back holding, had a jam thumb last week. That's why Marcus Hancher held. Kick is up, certainly long enough, and a little wide, apparently. Boy, it looked good from our angle, but the referees are right there, and everybody gave the same signal. Must have went a little wide left, so it's no good. He misses for only the second time this year in five kicks. It's the end of the Westmore record is six field goals, so he's got a good shot at setting a new single season field goal record and I believe what I read nine or something is the career record so he's got a good shot at that definitely too this only a sophomore season definitely one of the best field goal kickers Westmar's ever had so the Tigers regain possession we kind of expected a low scoring defensive hard fought football game here tonight so far it's shaping up that way in the opening quarter with seven minutes three seconds to go here in the first period of play in Crete Nebraska one Quarterback sack kind of broke that uh, drive down for Westmore after McClinic's 40-yard run got him into Doan Real Estate. So Strata in motion. There's the option. Canner going to have to eat it back inside. That one really got turned back in by, again, some good defensive end technique by Mike Rogers. He really came down the line, squared, and then came down the line and forced Canner to look for a hole inside. So he just followed his fullback up inside and got a yard or so. Back no gain on the play. Second down and 10. Next week, it's uh, Concordia out of St. Paul in town. It's homecoming. It's always one of the fun stops along the football trail each fall. Hope we have weather like this. Just beautiful here in southeast Nebraska tonight. Back to pass. Throws down to Dexter Hoskins, who opened the game with a touch. Well, the pass catch of about 10. This one again of about 10 yards. Seeloff again coming up for the quarterback position to make that tackle. And Looks like another 10-yard gain. Good for the first down. And then slants across the middle. Makes the catch. Front of Seeloff, who's giving him a pretty good cushion. A little respect, I'd say, for number 80 out there in the flat. It's the option play. Pitch out to Estrada. 35, 40, 45, 50. Tripped up by Marcus Hancher. Richie Holmberg makes sure that's the end of the road for him. But it's again into Westmore Real Estate for their third straight drive. And they've got a first down to the 47-yard line. Boy, was there an opening there. They kind of faked all of the action to the right. Quarterback Canner quickly whirled and did a quick pitch out there at the weak side to Estrada. And Estrada got right down the field, not even touched till he picked up about 15, 20 yards on that. First and 10 to the 47. A bigger bargain will not be found. First and 10. 5.39 to go. And we're starting to see these two teams settle into their game plan now. Doan came out throwing the football at him. It's just to loosen things up. There's Estrada into the middle. Got a stumble as he looked for the hole. Kurt Westhoff. And Robert Johnson were there. Two linebackers headed him off at the pass. This is Stratus, a 170-pound junior out of North Platte, Nebraska. 
He didn't play a lot last year. In fact, I think he carried only four times. He came into the game up in the Mars hurt. And it really hurt Doan, too. They ended up uh, losing 41 to 16. And as Coach Mazel says, 41 points on Doan's defense is something that's virtually unheard of. It's a great football area, good football town here in Crete. And Doan usually has a very respectable ball club. There's the pitch out. Whoa, what a high low hit. Frenchy Holmberg took him low. And I think uh, Rogers, no, Kurt Westoff came up, took him high, and that one was a big time hit there, I'll tell you. That was John Bauman out of Nor uh, Norfolk. 240 pound fullback, but I'll tell you, the combination of the high low job there sent him cartwheeling. Third down and about 12 to go. Talk to uh, Joey Holmberg. Team's been kind of enjoying the crunch course from the NFL this week, a video that's out, and that was one that I think fit on that video probably. That would make the crunch course of NAI football. Third and 12. 414 left to go. First quarter, there's the little slant in, no good. Again, Westoff put a good lick on Dexter Hoskins. Westoff at 210 pounds and one of the top hitters in the club. Really put the wrap on Dexter Hoskins, 170-pound wideout. Hoskins very slow getting up, kind of having to be pointed to the sideline. He's going to walk it off. That'll bring up a fourth and 12. Boy, there is some hitting going on here in the first quarter. Dennis Hall, number 36. And Dennis Hall back to do the punting for the second time tonight. Holmberg and Safford back to receive it. Again, a bad snap that took one quick skip hop up to him. And Joey Holmberg going to let this one roll, and they're going to pay for that. Got a flag down, too, back upfield. That's going to roll dead at the five-yard line. Penalty flag on the play. I don't know what the altercation was back up the field. That was uh, no return at all, so we'll see what they're talking to the Doan captain, so apparently it's going to go against Westmar. They couldn't get hurt much worse than they are already. They're backed up to the five. What a punt. Hammered it out of there and it's going to drive Westmar deep in the hole. About a 40 yard punt thanks to the roll. Blocking and an illegal, illegal block Westmore. on Westmar. Blocked it below the waist, so this will put it half the distance. They're going to be in that three yard line range. Westmar looking at about 97 and a half yards of real estate. About as bad a field position you can have. And they're going to come out in the wishbone with Hobart, Shipley, and it looks like uh, Charles Hill on that backfield. Hill's going to be the main ball carrier with the Shipley, and uh, there's another fumble. I think Westmar maybe got back on it. Shipley and Hobart simply in there to lead the block in, and they went straight up the middle of the power out to about the eight-yard line. I know uh, Coach Schmeisel talked about the fumbling Charles has had problems with the last couple of weeks, and there was another case where he was trying for that extra yard, and as Coach said, if he'd just be content with a one or two yards sometimes, he'd probably never be fumbling, but it's that extra effort that he's trying to uh, put forth to get that Second extra yardage that's uh, creating some of those fumble eight. situations. And last week, of course, a couple of times, very costly. Got about five, almost six. Second down, we'll say five to go. 3.19 to play in the first quarter. And scored us. There's Hill blasting off tackle, and he won't get a first down with that. In fact, only about a yard carry. Hill, the ball carrier. Now Westmore may have to open it up a little bit. Tackled by a den of Tigers, led by number 60, Kerry Anderson. So you have to punt it out of here. Doan's going to come up with some excellent field position. Sooner or later, Doan's going to capitalize on one of these Gain possessions in midfield. It'll be about their fourth straight possession in excellent territory. Or at least uh, they've been across the 50 on their first three possessions. They did start their last out of their own 21, but able to move it to about the 45 in the Westmore Real Estate. Tigers have the week off next week and then hit the road again. They'll be traveling to uh, Seward to play Concordia, Nebraska. Westmar's opponent next week, Concordia out of St. Paul. Well, the referees Penalty step in as the flag goes down in Delay the dome game. backfield. Westmar. Delay a game against the Eagles. So this is going to make it an even tougher third down. It was third and about three, and it's going to walk it back inside the five again. Puts it on about the four and a half. We'll say the five, but they are actually inside the Delay five about the football's the length. Eagles. The ball is back at the four-yard line. Third down at about eight to go now. Kelly McClinic still got him in the wishbone set. They may play kind of close to the vest. You don't want to give away anything away down here. Play action fake. McClinic looking long. Going to air it out. Boy, did he wing this one. Skolton can't quite get there, though. 
He had Neil Hall from the tight end spot going down the field, down the middle of the field. Skolton running the right sideline in front of the Doan bench. He had the second. They got Rob White backed up into the end zone, checking that back line to make sure he didn't step out. Of course, meant be a safety. That might not be the bad thing to take right here. At least this would be one of those situations you'd think about maybe taking the safety. Low end over end punt, but it will take, of course, a favorable Westmar roll and get out of bounds. Well, that was adequate enough. Got him out over the 40. Going to mark it out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. So from the back of the end zone, if you want to measure it that way, about a 53-yard punt. We'll take it from the line of scrimmage, of course. You won't get that much out of it. End up, uh, well, take about 15 off of that, about 38 yards. That's still above his average, so that was uh, more than I guess you hoped for out of that situation. And Dana going to be, or Doan going to be backed up out to the Westmar 43 for the offensive opportunity. First and 10 for the Tigers. The ball is at the 43. Again, the left-hander, Troy Kantner, senior out of Lincoln, inner quarterback. There's the... Give uh, quarterback a keeper. Oh, well, fumble. And Westmar got it. Wayne Utick in there to make the recovery for Westmar. I don't know whether he ever got that stuffed into the tummy or not. It was hard to tell if he handed it off or kept it. And uh, I don't think the ball ever got into anybody's hands as he tried to exchange it to his big fullback, uh, John Bauman. Anyway, Utech, who led the team in fumble recoveries last year, ends up getting the football, and boy, there was a break. They took away the great field position for Doan, and Westmar's defense playing a courageous first quarter here. Down to the last two minutes, 12 seconds of the opening period, and this was living up to all of its pregame billing. Skolton and Blaine Bell are going to split wide to the right. Kelly McClinic's going to set the team down, take over at their own 42-yard line. They're just thankful to have the football, and this actually is their best field position of the night. There's some early movement over there on the left side. And I think Westmar is going to lose five yards. There's more than just a little bit of concern with the penalties on this ball club to this point. I know uh, talked about it at the Eagle Leaguer backers with the coaches last Monday and they know it's an area that's got to be healed. They're working on it. More or less just a concentration thing. That's just simply a concentration penalty right there. We just got to think the snap count and I guess you expect a veteran team like Westmar is basically this year to uh, Maybe just be the more disciplined ball club and not have those kind of things hurt you. Already, that's what about three penalties for him here in this ball game, and about 12 and a half yards worth. Been over 100 yards in two of their first three penalty, uh, two of the first three games, and up about 75 yards last week, which is still high. First and 15. Split receivers to both sides. A pro set veer. There's to get a hill. Hill. Given ground and now taken down for a loss. Another flag going to go down in the vicinity where they usually call holding. So I think this will be 15 more probably against the Eagles. You haven't seen a preliminary signal, but where they threw the flag just about always is offensive holding. Doan's been applauding, so there it is, the official signal, and that'll cost the Eagles 15. Tigers will, of course, decline that since Westmar did lose a couple of yards on that. Second down at about 20 to go for a first down. Back to pass. McClinic rifles one down to Skolton, makes the catch to 50, 45, got a first down inside the 45 at about the 43-yard line. Tackle going to be made for the Tigers by Pat McHenry from Aurora, Colorado. And the Eagles got a big first down there. That was second and long. And a pass over the middle, good for about 27 yards to Skolton. Skolton's first catch, uh, catch of the night. Skolton now has caught six passes. He's averaging 36.4 per pass catch. And has hauled in two touchdowns, and both were down at Fremont against uh, Midland. There's a give up the middle to Kelvin Pierce. Just a straight old-fashioned dive Pierce. play, and Pierce going to go for a yard or two to about the 41. Tackled by Gamble. Second down at about eight to go for Westmar. We're down to the last minute, 10 seconds of the first quarter. Still scored us. Westmar on the drive. There's the option. McClinic going to carry inside the 40 to the 39. Boy, did he take a lick there. Good pop. Uh, going to be dished out by the Tigers, uh, Rich Bartlett, I believe, coming up from the strong safety spot. Picked up about three, it's or about two maybe, third down and six to go for the Westmar first down. We're inside the last 45 third seconds of the opening the quarter. On well, so far the first 15 minutes have been everything we thought it would be. And I think you're gonna see four good hard-hitting football quarters here tonight. There's a quick pass. Again, he leads Shipley a little too much. Again, it was open. And it's going to bring up a fourth down and seven for, or fourth down and six for Westmar. 
and the punt team's going to have to come on. Like the clinic's kind of looking to the sidelines. Maybe they won't punt it. Well, just a passing thought, I guess. They are going to punt it. Bad snap, but Rob White got down to scoop it off the ground. There's a fair catch up in the face mask. The catch going to be made by Sean Sterling, the freshman out of Le Moyne, Nebraska. And the Tigers are going to take over at about the 15-yard line. A little bit of a breeze tonight, and it's kind of favoring Westmar here in the first quarter, although it's going kind of from one corner to the other corner across the field. 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. We're scoreless. Troy Cantner brings the Tigers step out, sets them down in the 10-yard, I believe, is identified as the 15, actually the 10. There's the give up the middle. Not much there. They're again going to bomb, and they're going to the big fullback, seeing if they can't uh, make Westmar start playing a little more honestly inside. Quarter is going to expire on that play. They're going to just let the thing run down. Five seconds, four seconds, and they're already heading to the other end, so we've come to the end of the first quarter. No score between Westmar and Doan. Football action being brought to you this evening on Cable Channel 20 by the leader. Lamar's Beauty College, Plymouth Plumbing and Heating, Augie, Susie's Deli, Hopkins Drugs, Stevens Cleaners, Ben Franklin, Mount Drug, J.C. Penny, b &H Tire, Behind the Eight Ball, First National Bank, Palmer Shoes, TJ's Antiques, Susan Mill Standard, the Lamar Savings Bank, the Lamar's Truck Haven Cafe, Curtis Pharmacy, Adler's, and Williamson Don't Company. The basketball team is now selling a variety of... Second down at about nine to go. They're going to move Estrada out here to a whiteout spot. There's the option play. Going to go to the big fullback, Bauman. Bauman going to bust out over the 15 to about the 16-yard line. Up to make the hit for Westmar was uh, Scott Seeloff. From that cornerback spot. Seeloff's been in on a lot of action here in the early going. Hustling into the lineup for the Tigers. Going to be a TJ Thompson, or JT Thompson from Aurora. He's a Third freshman kid. For the Tigers, the ball is at the 15. Don't seems to go out recruiting to all these little towns throughout Nebraska. And a lot of the kids are going to be from some uh, Nebraska communities you might not have heard much about. Little communities. Crete itself is a town of about 4,800. Very beautiful community, a lot of trees. This timeout's going to be taken as the 14-14 left to go in the first half of football. No score, just in a way in the second quarter. Going to run a wide slot to the right side. Cantor taking a long look at that Westmar defense. Will some early movement up there. Patrick Walton, I think, moved a little early. Estrada going to carry out over the 20 to about the 23-yard line. He got it up for the first down, so they possibly will decline the penalty. Although it'll be five, and they get the first down anyway. I think they may have got an extra yard if they take the play. Referees are going to come out and give us the hand signal. And now let's talk to a captain from Doan, and Kantner comes up to uh, hear the referee out. But I'm pretty sure they'll take the play as it stands. And the conversation was brief. And they're, they probably have caught a glimpse of the referees in their attire tonight. Shorts here in late September and <laughs> in Nebraska. Who would have thunk it? Here's Kantner. Pitch out. Estrada. Estrada to the 20. Trying to get outside of the 25. They've got it. Oh, Marcus Hancher missed the tackle. 40, 45, 50. Touchdown. Saving tackle by Seeloff and by Frenchy Holmberg. Boy, he'd have been gone if he'd have got over Seeloff. Boy, this kid's got explosive speed. we got a flag back up field. I think most of this is coming back. Going to be a blocking violation against the Tigers, and I would almost guess holding. I think they had a they had a pile there where Estrada was trying to get around, and I think they had uh, Westmar down and were holding him down. So I think holding may be the call here. We'll see. Talking over with Kurt Westhoff. Anyway, it's coming back. Break for the Eagles because, boy, Estrada almost ripped that one off in the distance. Kid's got some talent. Certainly a different kind of running back than Charles Hill with that good, explosive, quick burst of speed. And Charles, that power runner inside with the explosiveness to bounce outside. Backfield of motion going to be the call. That'll cost him five, so it makes it a first and 15. The long run by Estrada is negated, and there's another flag goes down before we ever had the football snap. Flags on the play. Now we got a game. delay game against the Tigers. Westmar was shifting their defense around, and I think uh, Troy Cantor was waiting for him to settle to call the play, and they forced him into taking too long. So Doan really hurting themselves on this drive with the penalties. 
think, uh, as you recall, some of the past uh, five games, there's been a lot of penalties between the two, and uh, Doan is usually a highly penalized ball club, and so far Westmar's proved to, proven to be a heavily penalized team here in 1987. So now you're looking at first and 20, 13.07 to go in the second quarter. No score. Westmar missed a field goal. Here's the option, Kantner. There's the pitch out, Estrada, 15, 20, 25, and out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. Marcus Hancher came up and put a hit lick on to finish him off, but it was Frenchy Holmberg that took him out at about the 25, and that was a gain of about 12 yards. Still leaves him about second down at about eight to go for the first down. Doan going to come out with a formation, sending two receivers split wide to the left side. Got Estrada and Bauman to the backfield. There's the option. Pitch out. Estrada does a complete circle, and he'll be hit by Westoff again to the midsection. Westoff laid another good lick on him, and that sent Estrada rolling backwards by about uh, three, four yards. He really put another good pop to the midsection. There is some hitting going on out here tonight, and you're getting enjoyed right here on Cable Channel 20. The next uh, week, we hope, Barring any unforeseen things, we can get her back on Sunday night like we planned to do all along. This third straight Monday of coverage, but hopefully we can be back on Sunday next week at 8 o'clock. So pass the word. Make your plans for next Sunday. Cable Channel 20 covering Westmar football. 12-21 to go in the first half, and it's no score. Back to pass. Kantner takes a look. Looking for his man to clear. Going to be caught up in the middle. Frenchy Holmberg right there with the coverage, but he missed the tackle, and it's going to be enough for a first down. Pass complete over the middle to uh, number 82, Preston Davis out of Thornton, Colorado, a freshman. He just uh, ran kind of a little down and in. Frenchy was right there, but I think the technique of the coverage uh, allowed that one to be complete, and then Frenchy missed the tackle, allowing him to get enough for the first down. Out over the 35, about the 36-yard line. The Tigers managed to get out of the hole anyway. Remember, they overcame a couple of penalties to get that first down. Bauman and Estrada in the backfield. Sent a man in motion. Option play to the left side. Kantner on the keeper. Kantner out to the 50 and got another first. No, not quite the 50. Got another first down, though. Tackle going to be made by Mike Rogers, but downfield from that defensive end. And the Tigers pick up 11 on that play, and the sticks move again. They're out to about the 47-yard line. Again, threatening to get into Westmar Real Estate. They've been into Westmar Real Estate in all but one of their drives, I believe, tonight. First and 10 for the Tigers. The ball is at the 47. They have been inside the 30 once and fumbled that opportunity away. So they have driven the ball, but unable to uh, put together the long, sustained, mistake-free drives tonight. There's the option. Quick pitch. This is Estrada. 50, 45, 40. Another first down. Down to the 40-yard line at a Westmar Real Estate. Again, Frenchy Holmberg up there to make the hit. But again, a 13-yard pickup. That has been good for some big yardage each time they run it. They again fake everything to the right. And then just a quick pitch back to the left. And Estrada goes to the weak side. Kind of does most of it on his own. But he's got that quick acceleration. And he's upfield before most everybody knows where the ball's taken off to. So pretty good play. And it's been effective. By Sweet 16 Lanes, Neats and Grubs, Custom Interior, Evans Clothing, Godfather Pizza, Arnold Motor, Steel Ford, Schuster Grain, Wells Blue Bunny, The Country Kitchen, Reardon Auto, Vern Anderson Equipment, and Newell Chevrolet. First and 10 for Doan at the Westmar 40-yard line. Westmar giving up about 174 yards on the ground this year, 169 through the air, so pretty balanced. There's Bauman up the middle. Bauman going to carry to about the 38. And the opponent so far averaging about 17.7 points per game against Westmar this year. And even the touchdown allowed has been pretty evenly distributed defensively. Three on the ground, four through the air by the opponents this year. Westmar brings the 2-1 record into tonight's ball games. They, uh, of course, uh, opened with a 24-10 win against Buena Vista. 126-14 down at Midland and then lost 29-20 last week to Dana. Be home next week, entertaining Concordia in the homecoming game and a 1.30 kickoff. Back to pass, Cantner on second and eight, going long, incomplete, trying to hit flanker Rod McWilliams from Newman Grove, Nebraska. Joey Holmberg was uh, right there, stride for stride with him, and that one was way over the mark, and it brings up a third down at about eight to go. Now, this is the longest sustained drive in this ballgame now. It's the tenth play of this drive for Doan, and remember, it started back at their nine-yard line. 
They've overcome a couple of penalties. Third and eight. Big drive, big down on this drive. Estrada takes the little swing pass. Robert Johnson didn't actually make the contact to knock him down, but he forced him to slip and fall as he tried to sidestep Robert. Kurt Westhoff would have been there, I think, to stop him short of the first down. So they gain another couple of yards, fourth down at about six, and Doan's going to try to pin Westmar's offense in the hole again. Westmar just hasn't been able to get much in the line of field position. Only once have they get the ball out over the 40 to start a drive. They did manage a 40-yard run by Kelly McClinic. That's been the big play of this ball game so far. And that gave Westmar a shot at a field goal earlier, but that was wide left. 10-13 to go before halftime. Still no score. Mike Rogers may get one of those punts here pretty soon. This one almost straight up in the air. Barely got the first down through the air. No return. Finally takes a bit of a favorable Tiger roll and comes dead to the 18. Boy, Westmar is going to feel good about that because their field position is a lot better than you thought it would be. Kelly McClinic looking over that Doan defense. Tigers play basically a 52 look, but they'll walk away the weak side end oftentimes. Samuelson now steps up there with a man in motion to play that solid end. There's Charles Hill trying to bounce to the outside. Gets the corner turned out over the 20, out over the 25, about the 26-yard line. That's going to be good for about seven or eight. That's one of Charles' best runs of the night. Well, I'll tell you, yards have come grudgingly on the ground against this Doan team, and they traditionally rank in the nation, giving up yardage on the ground and being scored against. It's a team that just traditionally has good, solid defense. As Randy Schmazel said, it's going to be different than the Dana ball game last week. You're going to just see a team more fundamentally sound in everything they do. Maybe give you three, four yards sometimes, but it's tough to break the big one off against them just because they technique-wise do things so well. There's Kelvin Pierce popping into the middle. Pierce He'll go down here. short of a first down, short of a 30 at about the 27, 28 yard line. Tackle He's going to be close, but probably tackle. still about a yard to go. It's third and a yard. Westmar has had trouble getting to the outside and so far found the yardage up the middle. A little tough to come by also. This is probably the smallest team Westmar's run into this year. Doan up front defensively goes 200, 215, 230 at the nose guard spot, 6'5", 225 at the one defensive tackle in the 205, and then the linebackers are 205 and 200. It's hardly the size Midland or Dana had on their lines last, the last couple of weeks. The clinic on the quarterback sneak, and it looks like enough for the first down. He's out over 30. That's an eagle first down. That'll be Westmar's third first down of the ball game. McClinic's run for two of them, passed for another. So he's had a direct hand of the first downs tonight. McClinic back to pass, taking a look. Now he fires her down the field. It's almost yeah, intercepted. He had Rob White running underneath, and he was open. Instead, tried to go to Todd Skolton downfield, who was double covered, and it was almost picked off. Kelly Special presentation. Second down, 10 to go for Westmar, and they've got the backfield split. Pro set, back to pass. Almost a brilliant catch by Kelvin Pierce. The coverage by Sean Sterling, the free safety, as Pierce slipped out of the backfield and almost one-handed it over the middle as he was being taken down to the ground. That also makes it dangerous because a defensive back can come in and catch it on the carom, too. Fortunately, Blaine Bell checks in at one wide out. They've got the pro set. The backs are split. Kelly with a sprint out to the left, now rolling to the right. Gets some nice help from the backside, and he's going to scramble for what he can get out of it. To go out of bounds at about the 34, 35 yard line. It's still going to be short of the first down. Westmar faced with a fourth and five, and they're going to have to bang it out of there again. Rob White will be on to do the putting for the Eagles. Well, Randy Schmazel said this Doan team could likely be the best of the four Westmar will have faced to this point. Boy, that's living up to all expectations. There's the punt by White. Again, good coverage by Westmar. Takes a bit of a lateral roll, and it's going to be downed at about the 40-yard line in Doan Real Estate. And Doan brings the offense on. Both teams found uh, yardage tough to come by. There's been some moderate successes, but nothing real big yet. Pretty soon, somebody's going to rip off a big one. One of the things about these two ball clubs, I think you're going to see them stay disciplined enough that they're not going to try and force something big to happen. They'll just keep running their offense. There's Kantner on the keeper. Kantner still on his feet. Over the 50, over the 45, down to about the Westmark 43. Good for about 17, 18 yards before Frenchie Holmberg up there to put the finishing touches on a hit. And they forced Kantner to keep it. They had the pitch man Estrada covered, so Kantner did the right thing and turned up field and broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage and scooted up there for a good gain and a first down into Westmore Real Estate. Doan's been into Westmore Real Estate quite a bit tonight. 
but again, unable to break off anything real big. I think uh, 20 yards, basically it's been their biggest play of the night to this point. Westmar did have a 40-yard run by Kelly McClinic, gave him an opportunity to try a field goal early, and that was wide to the left. Back to pass, Cantner on a slant in over the middle, and there's another good pop. This time, Frenchy Holmberg put the lick on Dexter Hoskins, and Hoskins, you remember, was belted pretty good by Westoff coming across the middle a little bit ago that sent him to the sidelines, and that time he kind of tiptoed into the middle. He wasn't too anxious to go in there, and Frenchy uh, made sure that he maybe will think twice again about coming in there, laid another good lick on him. Second down, 10 to go from the Westmar 43-yard line. Going to send McWilliams out there, split left wide, uh, wide left, and uh, Hoskins comes to the near side. Backfield of Estrada and Bauman split behind the quarterbacks. It's the identical look Westmar's been given all night. There's Estrada now reversing field, back to the 50, 45, hurdles the tackler, taken down inside the 40 at about the 37-yard line. Robert Johnson and uh, Dan Oswald there to make the tackle on this Estrada kid. Boy, does he have quick feet. He can really pick him up and lay him down. He made that reverse field almost turn into a big one. Third down, they're going to need about three. Picked up about seven on the play. We're at the 720 mark here in the second quarter. Still no scores. We're about seven minutes away from halftime. Again, the pro set, Veer look. Split backs, split receivers to both sides. There's the pitch, Estrada. This has gone for big yardage every time. And again, 35-30, 25-20. Goodbye. She's gone. Flag down on the play, though, and this one could come back. It's holding against Doan, and there's a break. Westmar is going to get the touchdown. White off. Estrada going uh, 36 yards, and it's going to go for not a holding back at the line of scrimmage. No wonder there was nobody out there to tackle him. So the penalty going to put Doan back to the 39-yard line. Boy, Lady, or back to the 44-yard line. Boy, Lady Luck sure smile on the Eagles there. The touchdown wiped off. Cantner in trouble. Gets loose from one man. Now he's scrambling up the middle. Breaks another tackle, and now he is outside. Still looking downfield. Fires tipped and almost intercepted by Robert Johnson. Another flag down, and I think we may have another holding call against the Tigers. Referees are conferring, but again, it was right near the line of scrimmage where they were trying to protect their quarterback. Cantner had pass on his mind all the way. No, he an ineligible man downfield. That's going to cost him, uh, well, they'll probably decline that since it'll be fourth down, so the punting team already on, so they'll decline the penalty. And uh, going to be fourth down at about 12 to go. <laughs> Here's the punt by Bell. Oh, what a dandy this is. Joey Holmberg faking like he was going for the fair catch and is going to allow it to get into the end zone. I'll tell you what, there's a there's an experienced uh, senior really putting the old faker on the coverage people, allowing that one to get into the end zone. I would drop a good 15 yards behind him, but he held the coverage up so they couldn't get down there to down it inside the five. And that'll come out to the 20, first and 10 for Westmar. Westmar has missed a field goal, a touchdown wiped off by a holding call in that series for Doan. And Westmar's got the football back. There's the pitch. Charles Hill, 20, 25, and short of the 30. It won't be enough for the first down, but it's going to be good for about nine. That's one of the best options Westmar's been able to put in operation tonight. 6.21 to go in the first half. Hope you're enjoying it. No score here from Creek, Nebraska tonight. Again, just about 15 miles from Randy Schmazel's hometown, Hallam where he grew up, a little small community, and he says about everybody's probably going to be here tonight to watch his team play Second football. One, this is his first visit to Crete since taking over as head coach. He, of course, came down here a couple of years ago as an assistant at Ron Zahorik. Here's the option. McClinic got some open ground, 35, 40, first down to the 42-yard line. And again, they're letting McClinic carry the football on that option. And up there to make the tackle, free safety Sean Sterling. Freshman out of Lemoyne, Nebraska, but another big gainer for Kelly McClinic, who's probably going to be the yardage leader for this football team tonight. He had that 40-yarder back in the first quarter and another good gain there. We got Westmar, first down territory out to the 42. 542 left to go in the first half. Blaine first Bell going to split wide to the right. Skolton going to flank here to the near side. Kelvin Pierce and Charles Hill in the backfield split behind Kelly McClinic. McClinic got stung early in this ball game. He's moving around kind of gingerly, but he's a tough gamer. A big hole off tackle. Hill to the 50, 45, slips and falls, but he's into 
Tiger Real Estate to the 42-yard line. Boy, if he could have kept his feet, he might have been able to load one or two more men and been off to the races. He is a shifty back and pretty tough to bring down one-on-one, -on -one, but the sticks move again, and Westmar's got their best drive of the night going here since uh, at least since the first quarter. That one the McClinic ran 40 yards on was a pretty good drive, and they ended up missing the field goal, and they're still about 15, 20 yards from being in field goal range as we get to the five-minute mark here in quarter two. Option play, pitch out, Charles Hill. Hill gets around the end, 40, short of the 35, but down at about the 37, 38 yard line, up to make the tackle. Gonna be uh, Rich Bartlett from the strong safety spot, and it's gonna bring up a second down, looks like about five to go for Westmar. Westmar is moving into what little breeze there is tonight, but that flag down to the end zone to our left, just barely flapping around, really not much of a factor as far as the wind goes tonight. It's a beautiful night, almost like one of those uh, early season games, first games Second of the season or something that you see in early September, late August. Just a gorgeous night. The referees in the shorts tonight. Shirt sleeve crowd for the most part. Skolton in motion to the left. Straight up the middle. Quick opener. Hill is going to dive for the first down to the 30-yard line. Westmar is closing in on their deepest penetration to the night. When they missed the field goal, they had to see where they uh, finally got to. Down to the uh, down to the 23-yard line was their deepest penetration back in the first quarter when they missed that field goal from uh, 29 yards away, 39 yards away, I should say. No score here. We're inside the last four minutes of the half. We could go to the half. Scored us. Jones had a touchdown called back. Westmarsh missed that field goal, so both have had one scoring shot. Hill's going to go up the middle. Fumble. They ripped the ball out of there. Westmarsh got on it, but have been blown dead already. That's unfortunate this time because Westmarsh could have got another five on the end of the play. Byron Bowling jumping on it. Going to mark it on the 27-yard line. And a second down and six, seven or six coming up for Westmarsh. Let McClinic checking over that Tiger defense. Got him set down on that. 27-yard line. Skolton going to be a wide slot here to the left side. Pitch out. Pierce. He's to the 25. Side steps. Uh, one would-be tackler, but can't quite get to the 20. Close to a first down. Let's we'll see with the market. As they did run him off the field at about the 21-yard line. And it's another first down. I think, uh, Okay, Westmar trying to capitalize on their biggest scoring opportunity of the first half and a scoreless tie. We're inside three minutes to go now. Fumble to the center snap. McClinic can have to just fall on it. Recovers it. And Kelly kind of slow getting up again. He, of course, had those uh, stomach muscles stretched a little bit a week ago against the Dana Vikings. Came in less than 100%. And he's kind of been ginger all evening. Got hit early in the ball game, And I think he got stung a little bit. He's... Uh, a real gamer, and he's shown us before he can play with pain. I think he's playing with a little bit here tonight. Second ball back at the 23, the second down at about 12, 13 yards to go for the first down. We're down to the 228 mark. Well, you at least want to salvage a field goal out of this if you can. Skolton in motion to the left. There's the give to Hill. Hill breaks one tackle, then another, and he dives inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line. That was just good second and third effort by Hill that got some yardage out of that. There wasn't much of a hole there. And the Eagles are looking at third down at about eight to go. Clock running, we're down to the minute 45 mark. Back to pass on a play action. McClinic with a lot of time, looking for Skolton. Pumps, now fires, got Blaine Bell, touchdown! Blaine Bell was open at 18 yard TD strike. This freshman kid's first, or sophomore, I guess, uh, Blaine Bell, a sophomore out of Lake City, makes his first TD pass reception for Westmore. In fact, I think his first pass catch this year, and it was a big one here to break a scoreless tie with a minute 33 to go before halftime. He just kept moving and found that open territory, and uh, Kelly kept his eyes glued on, focused on that downfield uh, area where the receivers were scrambling around. He had Skolton actually open at about the five also as he moved out to get closer to the quarterback. Bell kind of slipped off to the back side of the end zone and a perfect strike in there by McClinic. Kick by Morey is going to be good. It's 7 to nothing. Westmar, a minute 33 left to go in the... Talk about your big drives in this game. That was a 10-play, 80-yard drive. Remember, it came after the touchdown. had been called back by Doan, and Westmar held defensively. Then they punted into the end zone. Westmar took it to throw 20 and drove it in for the score. 18-yard TD pass. Lane Bell for the only
only point so far in this ballgame. Kickoff's going to go out of bounds, so they'll come back and do it all again. Might also man mention that 80-yard drive was a mistake-free drive, too, and Westmar hasn't had too many of those over the last three weeks, it seems. They can't put together those long, sustained, mistake-free drives, but they had one there, and it broke the score to tie. The second kickoff, going to get down to the 20. This one is returnable. Going to be returned by Brian Schmidt. He went laterally a long ways, but didn't get upfield much. Only got about a yard gain. Trent Quick was down there, and Kurt Westoff to make the hit, and they got another flag down. Preliminary signal is that it's going to be against Doan. There's a illegal block again below the waist against the Tigers, and this will mark it off half the distance back in the neighborhood of the 10-yard line. A minute 24 left to go in this first half, and Doan now playing catch-up football. This team has actually defensively given up some points this year and tonight. Yardage for both teams. Troy Kantner got him set down now just outside of the 10-yard line. He's looking at a lot of uh, green grass in front of him in the end zone and just a minute and a half to work with. There's a give to Bauman, the big fullback, still on his feet, still on his feet. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Fumbles the football, but it was after the whistle had already blown. Westmar got on it, but it won't stay in the Eagles' possession. That's not a huddle as Doan's in a hurry-up mode. No timeouts. Going down and out, and the receiver, McWilliams, had not turned out. He was heading downfield. One that had the best shot at catching now is Scott Seeloff. But can't. Three split receivers. Kantner back to pass. The lefty in the pocket. Fires as he was hit. Passes and it's incomplete. incomplete. Trying to hit uh, Preston Davis over the middle with that one. Press at this time with a tight end. Split receivers to both sides. McWilliams here to the right side, the near side. And Hoskins out there to the right draw play. Estrada, 40, 45, 50. Sandwiched at about the 47-yard line by Westoff and by Marcus Hancher. Another good lick put on. You can hear it up here again. But that does, of course, eat up some time. Draw plays a long uh, play setting up. And Doan has to hustle up field after a first down acquired on that run by Estrada. Heavy rush. Going to be hit as he unloads it, but McWilliams makes the catch at the 40. 35. Going to be taken down at about the 33 yard line. Again, a first down. 28 seconds left. They'll hold the clock to move the sticks. Pick up those 13, 14 yard chunks on the passing plays. Can't afford to do that anymore. They got to tighten the grip. Back to pass. Heavy rush. Incomplete. Skipped one in there to Cantner back off the center. Rolling to the right. Now the pressure's on him. Going to fire back across the grain to Estrada. Estrada going to make the catch at the 20. 15. Stacked up as the clock winds down to the six second mark. And again, they'll have to stop the clocks to move the sticks. But the clock will begin to move as soon as the referee signals it. A Tiger first and 10 at the West Bar, 13 They line. won't have time to get the field goal unit on there. They're going to take one crack of the end zone. This should about do it for the half. Yeah, they're going to just fire a quick one out here. Whoa, almost intercepted there by Joey Holmberg. He fired one into the turf. They tried to run Joey back uh, with uh, the whiteout. Preston Davis and Joy almost uh, foxed them all and slipped in there to scoop that one off the ground for the intercept. Now they do have the field goal unit in there. They stopped the clock with two seconds to go. Renner going to try about a 32 yards. It looks like 32-yard field goal try. Matt Lutke of Alma, Nebraska, going to hold it, and this one is good. So Doan got on the board just as the half comes to an end. Seven to three. Westmar on top. What a hard fought first 30 minutes of football. The scoring recap is simple. It is uh, a touchdown pass from a clinic to Blaine Bell in the last two minutes of the first half. Don't took the kickoff. Westmore may be playing it just a little too soft on the defensive side, not wanting that big play, allowing the short chip uh, pass uh, plays to get down there quickly. And Don did an excellent job of milking the clock down to the two second mark, got the 32 yard field goal out of it before the half ended. And it's 7-3 in favor of Westmar. Westmar missed the field goal earlier. Don't had a touchdown called back. And that pretty well summarizes the first half. Basically played in behind the 20-yard uh, lines as the uh, two ball clubs really played a good, hard-hitting first half of defense.
Well, the two ball clubs are back out and just about set to go over the second half. Few first half stats in that ball game. Kelly McClinic hit three of eight through the air for 47 yards. And of course, through the touchdown pass to Blaine Bell. And uh, Troy Kantner was six of 14 for 63 yards. A lot of those completions came in the last drive to set up the field goal. Uh, Doug Estratus rushed nine times for 88 yards for Doan. For Westmar, Charles Hill, the leading rusher, 13 carries, 69 yards. Kelly McClinic, 43 yards and seven carries. And Kelvin Pierce, 17 yards on four carries. Don't, of course, getting the second half kickoff since they defer their choice to the second half. Well, I think the breeze picked up a little bit here at halftime and again is uh, kind of whipping pretty briskly down the field. And we'll be at Westmar's back here as they begin the second half with a 7 to 3 lead. Westmar will be going from our left to our right here to open this second half of football. Get a good following down here from the folks that back Westmar Don't football. The and they have been half. treated to a good one. We expected a defensive fight here tonight. And we've got every bit of that. Eagles trying to bounce back from their first loss. Kickoff is going to be short, taken at the 29. Out over the 30, down before he got to the 35-yard line. The return going to be made by number 84, uh, Don Brackenhoff. And Don will put her in operation right there at their own 34-yard line. Well, there's the rare thing in football with this deferred choice thing that's become so popular that you end up getting the football to start each half. So Don received the opening kickoff, starts the second half receiving the kickoff. First and 10 for the Tigers at the 34. Hoskins going to split wide to the left side. Going wide to the right is going to be Preston Davis. In fact, they run three wide outs. McWilliams going to be a... Wide slot to the right side with split backs. There's Kantner on the keeper. Kantner going to carry out over the 40 to about the 41 yard line. Dan Oswald from the nose guard spot. Grab him around the shoe tops. Marcus Hancher got him up high. And it's going to be a gain of about seven. It's second down and three to go. Just underway in the second half of football. Longest road trip of the year for Westmar down here to Crete. Second down and three for the Tigers. Westmar won their first game in this five-game series Ball last year in the Mars, 41 to 16. They have never won a game down here at Crete. Lead it seven to three, though, as we begin the second half. Don't remember had a first half touchdown called back, and Westmar did miss a field goal. There's the give up the middle to Bauman, and Bauman's going to go down. Well, Sullivan Jerry back in here. Sullivan hasn't played since the first back quarter, and he'll start again at fullback here to begin the third quarter, and he carries for just Eight about a one. yard. Third down and still a long two to go for the first down. Coming in at the wideout spot, J.T. Thompson. They do a lot of ushering into the plays for those wideouts. Thompson and third McWilliams going to split wide to the right. Line. Hoskins, who has been kind of the primary target tonight for Kantner, has got two of his six completions. There's a fumble to the backfield. I think Westmore may have got on this one. A Eagles are celebrating that they've got it. Robert Johnson bounces out of there with a football, and there's an early break. Westmore is going to get the ball inside the 40 at the 38-yard line. The Eagles take over. 13, 32 to go, third quarter, and Westmar has a chance to capitalize in a big way early in the second half. It was just a bad handoff, bad exchange from quarterback to fullback, and let's see if Kelly McClinic can cash in on it. There's a get of Charles Hill back across the green, 35 down to the 30. Ball's going to pop out of there, and Byron Bowling going to fall on it for Westmar. This one was a live ball, and it's going to be a gain of about 10 thanks to the additional two yards picked up by the fumble. Charles Hills had a lot of fumble problems for the last three ball games, and he just about gave the football right back to the orange and black. Not quite enough for the first down. Got about nine and a half, and 13-22 left to go in this third quarter. Kelvin Pierce going to come out of there. Dwayne Hobart checks in at the fullback spot. Charles Hill and Hobart going to split behind quarterback Kelly McClinic. Two split receivers to the weak, to the short side of the field. Back to pass, swings it out there for Hill. Kelly Passes is under heavy pressure from Kerry Anderson from the defensive end spot. Never had a chance to really set up and fire it out there. So now it's third down and short yardage as Westmar will reload inside that 30 at the 29. Boy, they're with the wind at uh, Mike Morey's back. He might be able to punch a field goal through from here also. Kelvin Pierce going to hustle back into that Westmar backfield and 
Line up alongside Charles Hill. Short yardage, you'd think maybe they'd be getting Dwayne Hobart in there for the lead block. Maybe they're going to surprise and go up top here. Let's see. Skolton in motion back to the left side. Nope, Charles Hill, quick dive, another fumble. I think Waldeisen's going to get on this one and save the day. That time, a pretty good pop right on the football. Somebody stuck the headgear right on the football and jarred it out of there, and Jeff Waldeisen, the right offensive tackle, going to fall on it for West Bar. Well, I guess uh, one good thing comes for the fumbles, the offensive linemen get their name mentioned. <laughs> well, they stretch the chain, and West Bar was short by about the length of a football. They're going for it, fourth and inches. Kelly McClinic. Got them lined up in a wishbone set. Shipley and Hobart in there, leading the blocking for Charles Hill. Going to bounce outside. Boy, he may not have got it. Holy smokes, only needed a couple of inches there. About a foot tops, and Charles is going to be very, very close. He hit in there. Some good uh, surge on that dome front wall as the two lines kind of met and held a neutral pose in the middle of the field. And they're going to have to bring the chains out again to stretch them and measure them. They stretched the chains, and Westmar still was short by about the length of a football. What a defensive stand there by Doan's defensive front. Charles could have slipped as he popped out of there and didn't get to the first down yardage. Here's the give up the middle to the fullback, Sullivan, and he'll be stopped for no gain in the play. J.R. Johnson had him around the shoe tops, and Kurt Westoff got him high and wrestled him down. Second down and 10 to go, 12-21 to play here in quarter three. Still a 7-3 ball game, so Westmore unable to capitalize in the early turnover as they came up on a fourth and, and uh, about a foot to go short of the first down yardage. There's the option. Kantner on the keeper. Kantner out over the 40, out over the 45. Got a first down about the 48-yard line. Tackle going to be made by Mike Rogers and by Scott Seeloff downfield. Yeah, they keep forcing the quarterback to keep the football in that option. And in some respects, it's been a mistake. Kantner has hurt him tonight. Inside the 12 minute mark in quarter three. First down, and Doan's on the march again. Tigers have pushed into the end zone once, had it called back by a holding penalty, and salvaged a field goal in the hurry up. Offensive mode just before halftime. Otherwise, Westmar's bended a little, but not folded a tent tonight. Option play, pitch out. Estrada, Joey Holmberg came in, put a pop on him, and couldn't bring him down. Estrada's across the 50 into Westmar territory to the 46. This kid is a running back. He is very shifty, pretty tough to bring down in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He's just so shifty. And he's got certainly some attributes to Charles Hill, the national rushing leaders the night started. That uh, Charles Hill maybe isn't even gifted with. Two different kind of running backs, both effective for their ball clubs. And we're seeing two of the better ones in the nation here tonight. Nostrata for Doan and Hill for Westmar. Second down at about two, three yards to go for the first down for the Westmar 46. Option play coming at us. Here's Kantner on the keeper. Got a first down. Now he pitches to Sullivan, and Sullivan going to pick up another six yards. Boy, you can't run the option much better than that. Kept a good quarterback pitchman relationship. And as Canton was going down, he pitched out to Sullivan, who got another six out of the play. The 10 and a half minute mark in quarter three. Split receivers to the right. Backs are split behind Cantner and don't on the move here in their second possession to the second half. Long count. Cantner going to give up the middle. Here's Estrada. Breaks a tackle. Now against the grain to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. And Eagles go down all over the place without even laying a hand on him. This kid is shifting. Quite a cutback runner, as you can see there. And he's in to score from 30 yards away. This one's going to stand. He had the 36-yarder earlier that was wiped out for the penalty. This time, no flags down. And uh, there goes the big boom that they blast off here on a regular basis. Scares the living daylights out of here in Crete. But here in Memorial Field, the place has erupted on the home side because Estrada has put Doan ahead for the first time tonight at 9-7. to seven. Renner going to try to add the extra point. Lutke going to hold. It's a bad center snap. Now he'll throw it. It'll be incomplete. And Westmar going to break there because now field goal could put him back in front. It's 9-7. Mike Renner going to kick it off for the Tigers, who possess the first lead of the night for Doan at 9-7. to Boy, this Estrada kid is impressive. Just kind of talking here during the break. And I think uh, he may be the best runner Westmar's faced this year. Kickoff 
Going to be taken at the 25, out over the 30, and down at about the 37-yard line. Returned for Westmar. Love it and drove it on down the field. 72 yards and five plays for the touchdown. The last 30 on the run by Estrada. McClinic, pitch out. Charles Hill, 35, 40, down at about the 41, 42-yard line. We just haven't been able to get outside for the big break tonight. Kelly McClinic on an option play in the first quarter, rambled 40 yards, and that's our biggest play to this point. Second nine to go in quarter three. Well, if you like the good rock and sock of a defensive football, this one's probably one you're enjoying. And I kind of came here expecting this kind of a football game. Two very similar teams. Do a lot of the same types of things and do it well. Dwayne Hobart in the backfield and now in motion off to the left, leaving Hill the lone setback. Quick pitch to Hill. Penalty marker down. Hill dribbling the ball out to the left side. Gets the corner turned out over the 35, out over the 40, 46 yard line. Going to be close to a first down. Charles did a lot of that on his own. But let's see what the flag is. I think we're going to have a backfield and motion call because I think maybe Hobart turned up toward the line of scrimmage a little early. We'll see as they uh, talk it over. And we're about to have the five-yard penalty for backfield and motion. Going to move Westmar back to the 37-yard line. Second down at about 11 to go. Nine minutes to play. Third quarter. Nine to seven now. There's the give to Pierce. Pierce going to blast out of the quick opener. Out over the 40 to about the 40. 46 yard line and it's not quite enough for the first down but they're looking at third and about a yard now that was a big play gained of about 10 on the play and it's going to be third down maybe just a tad over a yard well I'd say the Purple Heart Award goes out to Ron Corey tonight our cameraman he's working with kind of a developing head cold and to appreciate his uh, courage and playing hurt tonight <laughs> 8.21 left to go. As the clock winds down here near the midway point of this third quarter. Skolton in motion. There's the give to Hill, and Hill going to be headed off at the pass. There's the gang tackling right there that's so a big part of Dome football. That's the way they play defense down here. They're always swarming to the football. That's going to be a loss, and now they're looking at fourth down and five. Boy, that's the second time now they've had a short yardage situation. Had a power attack on and unable to convert it. So it's fourth in a punting situation for Westmar, trailing nine to seven. The high snap. Mike Morey in here to punt this time. Apparently Rob White's uh, flu bugs caught up with him. Morey got off a dandy of a punt. Didn't look too good uh, getting off the left foot, but hammered it toward the sidelines, and it got a nice roll of about 15, 17 yards, and it's out of bounds finally down at the 10-yard line. Now that punt almost in the 50-yard vicinity, thanks to a nice roll. Punts like that will make us change the punting situation in a hurry. There's the pitch to Estrada. And a good play by Kurt Westhoff for the linebacker spot. This Estrada kid showing his quickness and speed when he gets outside, but Kurt got a good angle on him and just flat out ran him down. And had he not got him, it was going to be some... Uh, Good running room to the outside because Estrada had the blockers on further downfield. Actually, a loss of a yard back inside the 10 at the 9. Inside the 7 minute mark in quarter 3. Second down and 11. 9 to 7. Doan taking the lead with a 30 yard scamper by Estrada on their second possession of the second half. Man in motion back toward the football. There's the pitch to Estrada again. Estrada out over the 10, short of the 15. Boy, he. He is impressive when he starts going wide. He is by a two. And it's going to be out Marcus to right Hunter. at the 15 yard line. Going to get six yards on the play. Third down at about he six about left five. yet for first down. Marcus Hancher up from the strong safety spot to make the tackle for Westmar. Kantner looking at a passing situation probably. Going to send split 15. receivers to both sides. The pro set out of the veer. Goes in the draw to Estrada, and he's going nowhere. Stacked up inside for Westmar. Boy, that didn't fool anybody. See Oswald, Kratzel, pick him up as they get up off the bottom Jack of the pile. And Wayne Udick, there's 75. the middle three, and they all kind of hung in there together and stopped Estrada from getting loose. So a loss on that play of a yard. Fourth down at about seven. 
Eagles are coming for the block, and they almost got there right up the middle. Marcus Hancher almost got it. Eagles are not even going to try to return this one. The ball is down by the Tigers at about the 48. And it'll be out to the, the 48. Eagles Westmar's going to get an excellent down. opportunity. Got a flag down back up field on the line of scrimmage, however. So field. somebody probably... So as it turns out, it was offensive holding after the punt had already taken place. So that's the difference. We've retained possession. There's the slant pass over the middle. Again, attempted for Shipley. Knocked down by Jerry Gamble. Knocking down, 10 to go over the Eagles. Gamble is a 215-pound senior out of Georgetown, South Dakota. There's the draw to Hill. Hill out to the 45, and that's the end of the line right there. It's going to be short of a first down. Ends up with about a three-yard gain. It's going to be third down and seven to go. Gamble to knock that pass down. They got nicknames for a lot of these kids. They introduced them in the opening ceremonies, and Jerry Gamble's nickname is uh, Snack Pack. <laughs> Eagles at their own 45, third and seven. Big play to keep this drive going back to pass. McClinic going at it for Skolton. Makes the catch. Got a first down at the 45, 46 yard line. Boy, that was uh, textbook down and out stuff there. And Kelly threw a perfect pass. Skolton went up, although covered well, and made the catch for Skolton. I believe his second pass catch of the evening and his seventh of the season. 4.25 left to go, third quarter, 9-7 to seven Doan, scoring early in the second half. Westmar's in a catch-up mode, out of the wishbone. There's the option pitch. Hill now reversing field as he juggled the pitch, going all the way back across the field. He'll end up losing a couple of yards. Boy, this Doan team just can't be boxed. There you should have had over-pursuit to where the flow of the football was going. Instead, they were all waiting for him back on the weak side. Last week against Dana with all of their pursuit, to the football, that probably would have broke for big yardage. Doan, disciplined as they are, stayed at home on that weak side and had people there to head him off at the pass. And that's why they don't give up many big plays. Inside the four-minute mark, 350 and counting in quarter three. 9-7 Doan, a good defensive, hard-fought football game. Back to pass, heavy rush. Now Kelly scrambles, fires downfield. Shipley can't pull it up Passes off the ground. Shipley had found a little bit of an opening, but the pass was a little short. Eagles are looking at third and 11 now. Neil Hall in a tight end for Tim Shipley. Back to pass, taking a look. Goes over the middle of the draw, incomplete. I think he wanted to go to Kelvin Pierce. Pierce had actually slipped in in front of the blocking wall, and he didn't get himself in position to even catch the pass. So fourth and 11, it's punting time. Mike Morey in to punt again. See if he can get away. Something similar to last time. Oh, he put the charge into this one. Estrada going to catch it on the line back at about the 11, 15, 20. Oh, he found the wall. 30. And run out of bounds finally at about the 34-yard line. Boy, that had all of the makings of a big return, and that would have been about 90 yards if he'd have got loose on that one. This kid really has fast acceleration. He really gets started upfield in a hurry. And I think sometimes uh, is a little deceiving. 3.22 left to play in the third quarter of this one. It's about set to roll into the final 18 minutes of football here tonight. Kantner checks over that Westmar defense. Pro set. Here's the option coming right at us. Now Kantner tries to cut back up inside. He got caught from the backside pursuit. Oswald and also, uh, and I think that was uh, McLeod getting him for the backside end. Second. Ball in the... Doan 35. Here's the option play. Cantner slips another man. There's the pitch to Estrada again. Estrada cutting back across the grain. 50, 45, 40. And there's Rogers running him down from behind to help save the touchdown. Boy, oh boy. There's that late pitch again on that option. They had Cantner corralled. He was on his way down, pitched it out there. Certainly a dangerous pitch because it was always the result of a fumble that could come from that. But Estrada got it. And then cut back immediately across the grain and nearly ripped off the big one. That's going to get him down inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line. Another Doan first down, and they're on the move. Westmar's got to dig in defensively. Back to pass. Kantner going to unload it long. There is Frenchy Holmberg stepping in there, tipping it away. Good going, Frenchy. Covered that one perfectly and almost got in there for the interception. Wasn't fooled at all as Dexter Hoskins, the intended receiver. 
Second and 10 now, confronting Doan from the Westmar 37-yard line. Here goes McWilliams in motion back to the right side. Westmar's coming on a blitz. There's the quick pitch. Going to get out here to... Yeah, this is not Estrada this time. It's still going to be almost the same kind of results as Mark Crow from Hershey, Nebraska. Gets downfield. Boy, did he take some shots though. McLeod come up and really put the woodwork to him and drilled him pretty good at the 21, but it's good for another first down. Getting shredded by the option play in this ballgame. There's the bad pitch to Estrada, and he's going to have to just cover up on this one. That time, Mike Rogers crashed hard for the defensive end, and Kantner was hit just as he was pitching it, and fortunately, they didn't lose the ball, but they lost yardage on it. Second down, they're looking at Probably about 16 now to go for the first down. Minute 17 to go third quarter. Nine to seven Doan, and they're close to field goal range. However, they are going into the wind this quarter, and it could hamper any thoughts of a field goal from this point. Kantner looks over that Westmart defense. Got him in an eye formation now. There's Estrada, the eye back, and Estrada's going to carry down to the 20, to the 19, and a flag flies right about where the tackle was made. You start fearing face mask with a... Penalty tossed in there like that. Face mask it was, and that'll move the ball inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Westmar's defense needs to catch some life. There's the fumble. Westmar's got it. Mike Rogers got a hand in there and slapped it down, and it was McLeod getting in on top of it. The two defensive ends crashing hard from the outside. Rogers had a hand out there as he tried to pitch and knocked it onto the ground, and McLeod got it. Boy, was that a big defensive play. Right when the defense was really reeling, they came up with a big play to make the stop, and Westmar's got her back, trailing 9-7 to seven with 39 seconds to go in the third quarter. Boy, that could be the play of the game. That remains to be seen, but there's not a bigger one to this point than that one. There's the give straight ahead to Kelvin Pierce, and Pierce going to knife out over the 20 to about the 21. Gain of three out to the 21-yard line. This will be the last play of the quarter, probably, as Pierce again straight ahead. Out to about the 25, 26 yard line. You'll get another three or four in the third quarter. Ball game being brought to you this evening by Cruz and Cruz CPA. Sod's Barn Grill, Bucky and Foxy's Highlight, Timmy's Cafe, Jeans Plumbing and Heating, Kitchens Incorporated, The Pizza Hut, Ho Top Jewelry, Taylor Auto, Joe's Movie House, and Appliance in Video City. Westmark takes over in the fourth quarter. They have been a pretty good fourth quarter team at times here this season. There's McClinic going for the home run ball. It's going to be off the field. The wind just took that one off the field and unable to be caught as Todd Skolton was there. But, of course, there was no chance to even catch up to it. And Westmark is going to have to punt now. Mike Morey going to get away a low one with the wind in his face. Going to be handled and not any return to speak of there. Bartlett. Going to be hit immediately, and Doan's going to take over right about the midfield stripe. Westmar's going to have to grab some grass again. Third quarter, traditionally Westmar's bad quarter. They lost the lead. They're still very much in this football game. Let's see if they can rally to win it now. Over about a football's length into Westmar territory. They have continued to have the better field position just about all night long. Pitch out. Here's Bauman going to be met at the pass. And this big horse breaks a couple of tackles. Westoff took him headgear to headgear. Didn't bring him down to Wayne Utick. Another Lamar's native was right there to wrestle him down despite the broken hand he's playing with tonight. And it'll be a loss of two. Second and 12. And they're back now in Doan territory at their own 48. Back to pass. Canner from the weak side. Rogers got him from behind. It'll be a loss of about six or seven more. And now they're facing third and long. Yeah, only one receiver out on that pattern. He wanted to go long, but there wasn't time to set up as Rogers came in untouched. All the protection was actually in front of him, and nobody protected his backside. And he got it from Mike Rogers playing a heck of a ball game down here tonight. Obvious passing situation now as Cantner's looking at third and long. Straight drop back, throwing the swing out here for Dexter Hoskins. Hoskins at the 40, 50, 45, pushed up field, but it might have got him a first down. Wayne Udick just gave him a shove from behind, but it may have pushed him beyond the first down sticks. Let's see where they mark it. I think it may bring the sticks clear across. It's close. Had Wayne hit him at the shoelaces, he probably would have put him short of the first down. If they don't, well, the stretch of the chain shows first down. Dones on the move again of the Tigers into Westmar Real Estate. Quick pitch option. There's Estrada. 
Oh, nice play out there in the cornerback from Selah. Fought off the block of Hoskins. He's been getting that block established all night long and springing Estrada for some big yardage once for a touchdown, but called back. This time, a loss of a yard in the play. Perfect play out there by Selah. You don't do it any better than that. With 12.52 left to go in this football game, it's Doan leading a 9-7, to seven, trying again with a back wind at their back to get into the end zone and really put some pressure on Westmar's offense. Split receivers to both sides. Pro set. There's again to Bauman. Bauman with a little bit of an opening, and he'll get in there for a couple of yards. This Bauman's a converted defensive lineman. He was a starting defensive lineman last year at 240 pounds. Now, Westmar could counter with that. Byron Bowling was a fullback in high school. He tips the scales at a very tender 265 playing offensive line for the Eagles and uh, of course uh, Robert Johnson actually was recruited to Westmar <laughs> as a running back out of uh, Florida but of course uh, was Third such a standout of linebacker that's become his home so maybe someday before their careers are over we'll see him in a special situation but bowling would be the our refrigerator <laughs> on a special pullback play. There's Kantner scrambling out of the pocket. Close again to a first down. Robert Johnson came up and put the lick on him, but it may be enough for a first down as Kantner knew where the sticks were and tried to get there to near the 30. Well, he came up just a little bit short, just an inch or two. Just to buy just a pinch as the referee held his fingers up to the full sidelines. Kantner going for it on fourth and inches. Both sides trying to, rooting sections trying to help their ball club. So it looks like the big fullback, Bauman, with just a blast into the middle, is going to get him a first down inside the 30 to the 29. Boy, this is the defensive stand of the ball game. Westmark and Illiford to fall behind now by nine points as the clock's winding down near the 11 minute mark. First and 10. Kantner apparently checking off of the line of scrimmage as he's obviously calling out a new play to his wideouts. Back to pass, taking a look, taking a look. Now he fires downfield, incomplete. There's a flag on the flag play. On the the play. But we do a couple of people went the down play. there. And we'll see what they call. Now they waved the flag off. <laughs> so I don't know what they thought they saw. I think it would have gone against Doan for offensive pass interference, but they waved it off nonetheless. And it brings up a second down at 10, and now an official's timeout. 10.51 left to play in this ball game. 9-7 Doan, and the Tigers are threatening again. Well, the last time they got this close, they fumbled. Westmar get a break that way. A 30-yard run by Estrada wiped out Westmar's 7-3 halftime lead. There's some encroachment up front. Westmar in a blitz, obviously, and they try to anticipate the count, and there's flags all over the place. Westmar will obviously lose five here. It's going to bring up a second and five. We resume play. Second down and five. Well, after the, the five 24. marked off against the Eagles, the ball just inside the 25, but the 24, second and five, collision to the backfield. Now Estrada trying to get wide. Frenchy Holmberg going to take him down Estrada for a loss on the play all the way back to the 31-yard line. The now it's third, and they're looking at 11. It's Frenchy Holmberg's best ball game as an offensive or defensive player for Westmar. I guess we'll always remember the job he did late in the season last year at quarterback. There's the option pitch. Estrada to the 30. Tries to cut back inside. He's going to be down at the 28-yard line. J.R. Johnson made the big hit, and that's been a killing play all night long to Westmar. This time they stuff it. It's fourth at about nine, and it looks like Renner's on. They're going to try the field goal from about 45 yards away. A little wind aid here, but uh, it's still going to be a long kick right down the middle of the field. Going to spot the ball down. The kick is up, and it is short. Going to be taken by Holmberg, two yards deep. Coming out over the 10 to the 20. Head to head butt at the 25 yard line. Holmberg, you had to kind of wonder why he'd come out of the end zone with it, but it turned out to be a good decision because he's out to the 24 yard line. And Westmar takes over there. The defense held. Eagles got to have one good long march. They went 80 yards in the second quarter for their only touchdown tonight. There's Kelvin Pierce almost flipped the seam as he got in there with a quick hitter. Off to the right side. And he'll be out over the 30 to about the 31-yard line. Going to get about seven on the dive play, and it's second down and three. Two receivers split wide to the left. Now Skolton in motion off to the right side. Backs are split. It's Pierce and Hill. Hill, nope, check it option. Kelly McClinic. To the 45 and out to about the 46-yard line where he'll be taken down for Doan. 
by number 63, Jim Bartling, out of uh, Unadilla, Nebraska. And it's enough for a first down. McClinic with a big option keeper. It was a good fake inside to set that option play up to the outside. And Kelly going to keep it for about 10. 8.36 and counting here in the fourth and final quarter. It's been a good one. It's been a crowd pleaser all the way from uh, Creek, Nebraska tonight. I think they anybody is uh, going to leave early on this one. Clinic again on the keeper, and he'll go in uh, across the 45, about the 47-yard line. Picked up another two, and it's second and eight. Defense. Kelly looks over that defense. Two split receivers to the near side. Charles Hill in motion off to the right. Quick pitch. There's a flag down. I think that one's going to go against the Eagles. Pierce in the sweep. Gets across the 50 to the Doan 49, but I think a flag may bring this one back. Backfield in motion already the call, and I think, again, it was Charles Hill in motion, turning up toward the line of scrimmage too early. We back now to their own 41-yard line. Boy, those little five-yard penalties can just kill you on a big drive like this one's turning out to be. Option play, McClinic pitches out. Hill's got it to the 50, to the 45, and I think Charles got that first down. Boy, that was a big carry. McClinic, just like Troy Kantner for Doan, waited to the last minute to pitch it, got all of it he could, and then he pitched out to Hill, who turned it into another 6, 7-yard gain and got the big first down on a gain of about 14, it would look like. Hill's going to get him into Doan Real Estate to the 43. The Eagles. Big drive, and Westmar keeps it going with a big run by Hill. Straight into the middle to Pierce, and he was popped immediately when he got the football. Down underneath there, let's see who gets up and made that hit. Uh, inside, 57, Mark Montgomery for the nose guard spot. And uh, Mungo, they called him, I guess, in the introductions. And boy, that was a Mungo type hit. <laughs> 7.08 to go, and it's a 9-7. Don't lead. Westmark playing the role of uh, catch up here in the fourth and final quarter. And this may be their drive to do it. Clinic looking at second and 10. Split receivers off to the right. There's the dive to Hill, and that one's going nowhere. Now they're looking at third and ten. Skelton and Bell are going to split wide to the left side. Back to pass, takes a look, fires over the head of Shipley. Wanted to go on that little slant in, and it wasn't there. It was pretty well covered this time, but Ship uh, didn't have any chance at all of getting that one in. It's fourth down, and they're going to have to punt it. Back to punt. Again, Rob White's got the flu. He punted earlier, but I think he just can't go anymore. He hadn't played any the second half, I don't believe. Good kick. Takes a little bit of a favorable doan roll, but Westmar's going to pin him back in the hole at the nine. Boy, they can hold him down here. Westmar should get an excellent opportunity on one last final shot of the end zone with 6.04 to go. 9-7 doan. Yeah, you've got to take into consideration all of the weapons. Play contained defense. They can't let him out of this hole. There's the get of Bauman, that big fullback. 240 pounds. Boy, what a train this kid is, and he's out over the 10 to about the 12. He'll get him about three or four. Second down, looks like about six to go, so almost five to go, so gain of five. Thompson and McWilliams going to go splitting wide to the left side. The backs, Bauman and Estrada split behind the quarterback, Canner. Boy, we've seen a great display tonight by a cutback runner by the name of Doug Estrada. There's Bauman, the big fullback again. He'll be taken down to the line of scrimmage. Little or no gain there, and they're looking at third and about five. Big defensive play coming up for Westmore in this ball game. Defense getting a little help from the good rooting section that's followed Westmore from Lamar's down here to Creek, Nebraska on a Saturday evening in late September. Cantner checking off of the line of scrimmage. Westmore faking some blitz. There's the give on the dive to Estrada, and Estrada going to be stacked up at about the 16. It'll be short of a first down, looking at fourth and three, and Westmar's going to get the football. Should be around midfield, although the wind will be at the punter's back. Doing a good job, taking as much time in the huddle as they can. We're down to the 356 mark as Bell hammers it out of there. Safford going to make the catch at his own 45. Now to the 50, and that's where... The curtain closes on him, and Westmar's looking at 50 yards of real estate, a 9-7 deficit, 347 to go in the ball game. First and 10 Eagles. Now yeah, don't forget the Eagle League backer meetings on Monday during the noon hour. Certainly welcome to come down. Remember next week, Eagle football on Sunday night. There's McClinic on the option, and boy, he was KO'd. He's very slow getting up. What a rock and sock him hit put on again. Boy, they had all bases covered in that option play. The pitch man was taken. 
McClinic was leveled by two Doan Tigers, and he's going to absorb a two-yard loss back to the Eagle 47-yard line. Second and 12, and McClinic has to come up with a big play. Back to pass, taking a look. Throws down and out for Skolton. The wind again kind of sails that one out of everyone's reach. And now Westmar's looking at third and a long 12 and 2.57 to go. 9-7, Tigers lead it. Estrada with a third quarter touchdown early in the third quarter that wiped out a 7-3 Westmar lead at the half. Certainly the scoreboard tells the story. By far, this is the best defense Westmar has faced this year. Best football team, I think. Back to pass, McClinic. In and out of Shipley's hands. He was open. He just didn't catch it. Perfectly thrown. Ship doesn't miss those too often. Westmarsh looking at fourth and 13 with 2.51 to go. I don't know whether they can afford to kick it away. They may take a shot at it. Eagles are definitely going for it. Fourth down at about 12 to go. Play of the game offensively for Westmar. Don't helping their defense out. Scolton in motion off to the right side. McClinic back away from center. Rolling right. Pursuit is there, escapes one man. Now he's running, now he throws. It is tipped and caught by Neil Hall. First and 10, Westmar down at the 30. What a play. Flag down, back up field. There may be some roughing the passer. That's about where McClinic went out of bounds, and I think it's going to be against Doan for sticking it to Kelly McClinic. He's slow again getting up on the sidelines. He's hurt. They drilled him as he was right on the sidelines, and Hancher, in fact, is there waiting to come on. As Kelly's trying to regroup. He wants to come back in, and he will. Comes limping back into the Westmar huddle. What a play. He was in trouble. Looked like he was just somehow going to have to waste this one away. Found two open receivers. Hall tipped it up in the air, made the catch, and this will be tacked on to the end of the play. Big break for Westmar. This is going to move the ball down to the 16-yard line. First and 10, Westmar with 2.39 to go. Lady Luck smiled on the Eagle offense on the road. Boy, that was fourth and 13. Maybe one of the big plays of the season. Now yeah, these cardiac Eagles going to give us another exciting finish here, it looks like. McClinic pitches out. Bad pitch. He'll scramble him. He's going to get back on it, but it's way back at the 25. Kelly McClinic just isn't... Uh, at top health right now. He really took a shot out of bounds when he threw that pass completion, and he's still hurting, but he's a gamer. He's going to hang in here to the finish. They wouldn't want to put Marcus Hancher kind of, uh, of course, uh, he'd be coming in pretty green to this offensive series, and this is too big a drive. This may be one of the big drives Westmar has all season. Neil Hall checks in. Shipley going to go out of there. Inside the two-minute mark in this football game. Westmar, of course, only needs a field goal to get a, get a lead, but they need to get a little closer to give Mike Morey a better shot. He will be kicking into the wind. Second and about 10 to go. There's the give to Hill. A flag going to go down. Tim Pauley is in there, incidentally. He didn't start because of the flu, but the flag was thrown right at him, so it's either going to be face mask or maybe holding on Tim Pauley. Let's, not, let's hope not holding because that'd wipe out the field goal opportunity. Face mask, and this will be tacked on to the end of it. Uh-oh, holding against Westmar. We got them both offsetting penalties, and that'll wipe out a little bit of a loss there. But it did. He did some precious time in the minute 41 left to go in the ball game. Second down at about 20 to go for the Westmar first down. The clinic play action. They're coming with a blitz. He throws down and out. Skolton makes the catch. Where are they giving progress? to decide whether he got the first down. Well, I guess he's way short of the first down. He needed 20. He got about eight. So now they're looking at third and about 12. 12. They, of course, love to get the touchdown, but they're thinking just keeping it in field goal range. Certainly no turnover here. The clinic back. Heavy rush. Intercepted. Try to throw the screen. Standing there waiting for it. Defensive tackle Jerry Gamble, senior out of Georgetown, South Carolina. There's your ball game. The clinic intercepted for just the third time this season. That may have, uh, I don't know whether he ever saw Gamble there. He just kind of lofted it out there into the flat. The defensive tackle it kind of roamed out into the area. Don't read it perfectly, and they made the big play. And with a minute 13 to go, Kantner again checking off of the line of scrimmage, moving people around. Westmar's defense, it's simple now. Their task is to get that ball back somehow, some way. Kantner rolling, rolling, in trouble. Now cuts back up inside. Wayne Udick finally corrals him, and they'll take him down. 
second down at about 12 to go. Loss of two in the last play for Kantner. He just wanted to do something to keep the time running as long as possible in the play. They're running out of the eye. There's a give to Estrada. Estrada going to knife through there, still on his feet. Boy, don't let that kid get loose. Or he'll wipe out any hope for prayer tonight. That's out over the 25, about the 26-yard line. I didn't think there'd be a defense in the NAI ranks uh, that we'd be playing on our schedule this year. They could hold this Westmore offense to seven points. You just got to wonder how much of a factor some of the flu bug in that injured or in that uh, offensive line, how much of a factor that was tonight. Tim Pauley didn't start, played sparingly. And, of course, John Barton. Uh, came in here hurt. So not to make alibis, but certainly those things are factors in an offense that has not played at 100% health all year. There's again to Estrada. Estrada looking for an opening. He'll go down at about the 30. And it's going to be fourth down at about two to go. Westmar is going to get the ball back, but 16 seconds on the clock. And I think Westmar used their last time out. To punt, I think the task is simple. The Eagles got to block it. Didn't get there kick is a beauty with a win. Holmberg makes the catch on the run back at the 29. Going to throw it backwards to Frenchy Holmberg. Now it's loose. Frenchy makes the catch. They'll lose even more yardage. This one ends up all the way back at the 13. Well, I guess you appreciate the imagination of the play, but it certainly backfired this time. The two Holmberg boys try to little razzle-dazzle, but Doan just is not just can't be fooled tonight. This team has played very sound football. She's over. Time expires on the play, and Doan wins it. Nine to seven in a hard-fought rock and socket football game. Don't play shutout football in the second half tonight. Scores the winning touchdown early in the third quarter on a 30-yard run by Estrada. Remember, Estrada had a touchdown called back early in the ball game. Westmar missed a field goal that eventually could have made the difference, the outcome different. Nine to seven, the final, and. Uh, Two coaches, Randy Spazel and Brand Schwenk, exchanged handshakes. These two uh, really got after each other tonight, and it was a very enjoyable ball game for the fans. And if you like the defensive struggles, this one had all that uh, action for you, plus a lot of good hard hits in this one. Again, Estrada scores the touchdown that decides it. It came uh, early in the third. In fact, the second drive of the ball, uh, the second half of the ball game for Doan and the. Got it with 10-18 to go in the third quarter. There wasn't any more scoring after that. Westmore had a golden opportunity down inside the 20, but the interception wiped out even a shot at a, a field goal that could have given Westmore a one-point lead. So Doan wins for the fifth time in this brief six-game series. Westmore continues to be winless down here at Crete, and these two resume the series up in the Mars next year. Big thanks to the sports-minded firms that bring you football on cable channel 20. People like The Leader, Lamar's Beauty College, Plymouth Plumbing and Heating, Augie's, Susie's Deli, Hopkins Drug, Stevens Cleaners, Ben Franklin, Mount Drug, J.C. Penny, b and Tire, Behind the Eight Ball, First National Bank, Palmer Shoes, TJ's Antiques, Susan L. Standard, the Lamar Savings Bank, the Truck Haven Cafe, Curtis Pharmacy, Adler's, Williams & Company, Sweet 16 Lanes, Neats and Grubs, Custom Interior, Evans Clothing, Godfather Pizza, Arnold Motor Supply, Steel Ford, Schuster Grain, Wells Blue Bunny, The Country Kitchen, Reardon Auto, Fern Anderson Equipment, Newble Chevrolet, Cruise and Cruise CPA, Sod's Bar and Grill, Bucky and Foxy's Highlight, Timmy's Cafe, Jeans Plumbing and Heating, Kitchens Incorporated, Pizza Hut, Hotop Jewelry, Taylor Auto, Joe's Movie House and Appliance in Video City. Again on a beautiful evening here in Crete. Doan wins at 9 to 7. Westmar goes to 2 and 2. They come home next Saturday afternoon to celebrate homecoming, try to snap a two-game losing streak, and Doan improves to 2 and 2 with their first home game of the year. They'll have a week off and they'll hit the road to Seward for a conference game with Concordia two weeks from this Saturday.